a man was shot and killed in Wingate, North Carolina while streaming live on Facebook. Welcome back to What's Trending, I'm Candace Carozales. Subscribe for more social media news every day. Prentice Robinson would frequently stream on Facebook to his friends and family. On this particular occasion, he was walking back from the police station after making a complaint that a phone of his had been stolen. Then a man approaches and kills him. You don't lie. You don't lie. There was a manhunt for the suspect the entire day. It even caused brief panic at Wingate University, which was nearby. A local university was on lockdown for an hour. We all like hid under tables and we like put tables in front of the door. By the end of the day, suspect Douglas Colson had turned himself into the police. As a possible motive, reporters are noting how Robinson had been known to out local drug dealers during his live streams. Reporter David Santendre tweeted that he spoke to the Wingate police chief who confirmed that Robinson had been outing suspected drug dealers. He always suspected the man would have been beat up over it, but never shot. Prentice Robinson was 55 years old and the suspected killer, Douglas Colson, is 65. Obviously, social media has made it easier for kind of anyone to be a journalist in a way, um, but that's also obviously putting people at risk. Prentice Robinson's Facebook page has been made into a memorial. Though the shooting video has been deleted, the rest of his live videos remain available on Facebook. Deep South Records, which promoted Robinson's music, shared this video of him performing in remembrance. Now, unfortunately, this isn't the first time murders and attempted murders have been streamed on Facebook. In 2016, Brian Fields was shot in the street in what police said was likely retaliation for a violent crime he committed several years prior. Remarkably, Fields survived that attack, though he was shot and killed in another gang shooting seven months later. And a few months later, Antonio Perkins was shot and killed in Chicago, also while streaming on Facebook Live. What's up? And of course, Philando Castile was shot and killed by police officer Geronimo Yanez, and Castile's girlfriend began streaming on Facebook shortly after shots were fired. It's so odd, but interesting that there are these murders being caught on camera and being caught on social media and live streams. And I feel so bad for the friends and the family who are watching those streams and seeing it happen. But I think also the live streaming of police brutality and people being pulled over and being shot at and that being caught on camera, it opened up a lot of America's eyes to see what was going on and how different people are treated differently. An interesting issue about this live streaming culture though is if people are witnessing something bad happening, it can kind of make spectators out of the viewers rather than people that could be helping. Like last year, a mom in Arkansas collapsed and died while live on Facebook with her one-year-old daughter, and her father thinks many of those watching maybe could have taken action. The friend of hers showed up nearly 30 minutes after his niece hit the floor. Kiana's father wishes someone watching would have acted sooner. It's amazing for somebody to sit there and see somebody take their last breath or hear them take their last breath and nobody did anything. So, so what do you guys think about this story? Let us know. And for more stories like this, head to whatstrending.com.